So if you're going to build a house using one of these shipping containers, you need to keep in mind that, let's look at this. The walls are only 14 gauge thick. You know, that's less than an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna need some kind of insulation on there. Oh, it's a cold day here in New Jersey. Snowing, it, you, you cannot just live in one of these shipping containers without insulation. Let's talk about insulation and what is best for your house if you're gonna be using it, these shipping containers as a uh, home. <sighs> Brr, that's cold out there. It's gonna be in my office. <laughs> Boy, I gotta warm up. Well, like I just said, you do need to have insulation under or around and well under and around shipping containers when you're using them for your building when you're occupying them so let's look at my favorite and many others their favorite type of insulation to use on shipping container buildings in order to determine what type of insulation would be best for your use go to the climate zone map for your country. It looks kind of like this. This is the climate zone map for America. And it has all sorts of strata with different numbers. And as the numbers progress higher and higher, it's a colder zone, which needs a different type of insulation, usually more R value. And R value is how much a material is resistant for a conductive heat flow. Simply put, the higher the R value, the more insulation you'll have in your house or any type of building you use with your shipping container. Once you determine what climate zone you're going to build your shipping container, then you'll be able to determine what our R value would be required for the floors, for the roof, and for the walls. There are a lot of type of insulations you can choose and I'll list them at liveinacontainer.com. Check that out and you'll be able to see the charts and you'll be able to see also the listings and pros and cons of all those types of insulations. They include insulating panels, there's the uh, rigid foam board, the craft covered bad insulation, no covered bad insulation. You can even use blue jeans that's shredded up and blown into the cavities. There's all kinds of things that you might want to consider, especially if you want to go green when you're actually insulating your shipping container building. But my favorite type of insulation to use on shipping container buildings is spray-owned closed cell insulation. It has a lot of advantages. One inch of the spray-owned closed cell insulation will give you about six R value. Whereas compared to a bad insulation, you're only going to get about 2.5 R value. Now, if you want an R value of about R21 for your walls as an insulation, a spray-on closed cell insulation is going to give you that 21 value with just 3 inches of spray-on. Now, that's compared to 8.5 inches of bad insulation. Can you imagine all the space you would be losing in a shipping container that's only approximately seven and a half, eight feet wide, and then you're gonna close it up? The walls are gonna be closing in on you with all this insulation to get the same R value that you get when you use the spray-on. Use the spray-on. Another advantage of spray-on is that it, um, it actually seals all of the cracks and holes and crevices in the building and it will it's because it's sprayed onto all those cracks and crevices as you know in a shipping container it has a corrugated type of surface and so there will not be any air gaps that could capture any condensation between it and the insulation that could later on rot your gypsum board, assuming you're going to be putting some kind of finish in front of the spray on, which I strongly suggest you do because I think it actually will be required for you to do so for fire reasons on um, in your fire code. Check that out. But when it's sprayed onto that surface, it's tied up against it and it acts as a, a vapor barrier and an air barrier. 
perfect perfect so you've got the air barrier and the vapor barrier and you've got the efficiency of not very much of thickness so you can actually have so much more floor space inside of your shipping container building when you use closed cell spray on insulation now I'll be fair there are a few disadvantages of it one is it's expensive it's more expensive than the other type of insulation but in my opinion it's well worth it put it into your budget the other reason it's another disadvantage is that it requires a professional to do the work you can get kits you can even go on Amazon and buy kits and do it yourself it is so laborious and so messy and you use so much material in order to make it work it's well worth to get a professional to take care of that job for you that's one thing I wouldn't recommend D DIYers to do but if you want to go ahead knock yourself out another uh, thing that you need to be cautious about is don't get in a hurry when you're having that spray on onto your your building because sometimes the I believe that take one pass one you need to go over it about one inch each pass maybe two and then you need to let it set then you go back and put another layer if you want more than two inches and let's say in our example you want to get R21 so you'll need three inches maybe more and so make sure it sets I've heard stories about people who got too much of a hurry and they sprayed on the first part and then they didn't let it set well enough and they sprayed on another layer on it and it expands and it hardens and, and all sorts of things but what it's doing is it's encapsulating the first layer that never had time to harden itself and so then it causes all kinds of weird off gassings and gook and stuff you just you don't want to go there so hire a professional to do it you'll be really happy you did say if this video had value to you please give me a like on this and uh, also subscribe to this channel because we're going to be exploring all kinds of cool things you can build with shipping containers